Isaiah Mosley coming back to Missouri without a scholarship. Well, that's a scenario that now seems more likely to me than not. So let's talk about that, clarify scholarship limits, and more right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And you know what? Lately, if you've been listening to this program if you're one of the everydayers out there, you know that I've at least had some questions about this idea that, well, Isaiah Mosley can come back next season, but hey, not on scholarship. Name, image, and likeness will just essentially cover his tuition and hey, fine and dandy. Well, I have to admit, I had some questions on that. Despite some some good reporting from some good reporters out there, I was just going, okay, if this is really the case, because the NCAA traditionally has been very much against sort of skirting scholarship limits in any way whatsoever. I just had a hard time believing that they would actually allow this. But it turns out there's a good reason that nobody out there could really give me a concrete example of this. And it turns out, well, the teams don't really have to tell you who is and is not on scholarship. And in fact, they obviously keep that information very, very close to the vest. And according to some people on the Mizzou beat, there were even some Missouri football players last season who otherwise probably would have been on scholarship, but, well, essentially had their expenses taken care of for all intents and purposes, not in terms of a legal contract. But, yes, money is fungible, folks. You can spend it on whatever you want. The point is, yeah, some guys got their tuition expenses paid back by name, image, and likeness, basically. Well, again... I was just going, okay, but who are the actual players that did this? Well, nobody could answer me that question. And that's made me continue to be a little bit dubious. But here's the thing. After getting more into it and listening to Dennis Gates the last few days, well, he basically came out and said, hey, guys, this old scholarship limit of 13 guys, we can kind of forget about all that. He basically came out and said with things like NIL and in-state tuition and guys being able to cover their own tuition, yada, yada, yada. Well, that basically opens up to you can have as many as 16 guys, perhaps, who are scholarship level type players that are actually, well, three of them could be walk-ons, for instance. So if Dennis Gates is openly talking about this, well, who am I to question that? And plus, I've, I've seen other people put this out there that, well, Texas A&M last year, a lot of it was known that they essentially had 15, again, not scholarship players, but scholarship quality players on their roster. But just nobody knew exactly who it was and was not the walk-on in that scenario. Because apparently the NCAA, there's no, they're under no obligation to reveal that to any of us. And, well, I guess the NCAA is not going to reveal it either. So, again, this is a long way of explaining why there were no concrete examples out there. And, well, again, long story short, now my dubiousness, my, my curiosity, it's all been satiated. Apparently, if Isaiah Mosley can come back and, well, any other players on this roster can come back, not be on scholarship, well, what does that do for Missouri and Dennis Gates? And specifically, what does it do for Kobe Brown? Well, it gives that situation a lot more time and flexibility to play out because Missouri could essentially have the same roster of 15 guys it wants to have next season kind of set in stone by, say, June or so when Kobe has to officially decide whether or not he's going to stay in or out of the NBA draft. Well, again, if Kobe can come back next season and not be on scholarship, well, that certainly gives you a lot of flexibility, doesn't it? Or, hey, 
we happen to have a scholarship left for Isaiah, hey, here it is for you, buddy. Kind of like Mabor Majak got a scholarship last year too. So bottom line, once again, for Mosley, what does this mean? Well, I think it means almost certainly he's on the roster next season. Again, if his personal problems, whatever they are, if they're more manageable next season at the very least, I think he'll be on the roster next season. All indications are he's still hanging around the team, likes Dennis Gates and everybody, and I think they like him too. He's still working out at Mizzou. We see this put out on public and social media all the time here lately. So really, even though this is all very new, obviously I got kind of caught flat-footed, maybe assuming a little bit too much, but hey, hopefully this is all clarified for you now. Bottom line is, Basketball, you can have up to 16 guys. Heck, football, now since the limit of, of guys on your roster is 110 players, well, essentially that's your scholarship limit now too in terms of scholarship quality players. The actual scholarship limit's still 85, but 110? That's quite a bit of wiggle room there. There's 25 potential spots that you can give to guys who are really high-level players. So what does this do? Uh, to me, that just means the rich get richer. Teams in the SEC, the Big Ten, the biggest level of college football with the most money to spend, well, their teams are just going to keep getting better, I got to imagine. Hopefully that's good for parity in those conferences themselves, but it isn't going to be good for the mid-majors, if you will. And coming up, unfortunately for Missouri, their short love affair with Tion Gray, the four-star defensive lineman from St. Louis. Well, that has come to an end, at least for now. You never know. Jilted lovers occasionally do come back together. And I am being kind of serious there. I want to give Missouri fans a little bit of a tip, but I will say while this isn't something to really worry about, I do think... There is some other things we got to start to worry about a little bit with this Mizzou football team. So let's talk about all that coming up. But first, I want to tell you, of course, about FanDuel Sportsbook. And, of course, FanDuel is the official sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. And here's the best part. If you're a new customer, you can step up to the plate right now with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 by going to FanDuel.com slash Locked On. Sign up, place your first bet, and again, get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. And I got to tell you, tonight, I got to favor the Golden State Warriors, minus one and a half against Sacramento. Just a big time emotional victory for the Kings. I think the, the, the Warriors are just going to be a little more desperate tonight. So don't miss your chance to get a no sweat. First bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Again, that's fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. You know what, folks? I think I need a better perspective on Jake Garcia. So you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to the Locked On Canes hosts. We're gonna we're gonna find out from somebody who saw all of Garcia's snaps last year. Let's see. Let's find out what he really thought about him. So that'll be coming up later this week for sure. But before we get there again, let's talk a little bit about Tion Gray. Again, four-star defensive lineman. As many of those as you can get, the better. No doubt about that. Obviously, in the aggregate, hey, recruiting rankings matter. On an individual level, any one player, not the biggest deal in the world, as others have pointed out this morning in the Mizzou, in the Mizzou, in the Mizzou universe. Easy for me to say. But I will say this. Here's what Mizzou fans should keep in mind. In a day and age, hey, we know... Usually, if you commit and then flip to another team, you're probably not going to flip back, right? At least not in the high school cycle. But in this day and age, hey, Missouri just got Tamar Bates on the basketball court, a guy that spurned them in the high school recruiting process. Somebody Conzo Martin was really big on. Well, spurned him twice. Was originally going to go to Texas, then ends up at Indiana. So twice, Tamar Bates said, eh, Mizzou, I'm good. But then two years later, hey, the portal opens and he jumps right through it to Columbia, Missouri. So keep in mind, when you're on the internet, and this is just a good rule of thumb anyway, 
be nice to these kids. In fact, just don't interact with them at all. If you have nothing nice to say and be like, oh, you're, you're, we're going to kill you if we ever play in Oregon, that kind of thing. Even that is just stupid. Because again, who knows? The gray kid, he could come back to Missouri, maybe in the high school recruiting process, probably not going to happen, but who knows a year or two down the road, just keep those relationships alive. Keep it all positive, all that good stuff. But I will say, though, while this is not a huge thing to worry about, I do think it's fair to wonder about Eli Drinkwitz's actual player development, especially on offense right now. Because, again, a lot has been made of Eli Drinkwitz, his play calling. Well, Kirby Moore, now the Missouri offensive coordinator. So hopefully, at least in theory, that maybe perceived problem has at least been addressed. But development-wise, a lot of these, again, four-star guys that have come in, for the most part, well, a lot of them haven't really panned out. Now, Dominic Lovett, unfortunately, maybe is the best example of a guy who did develop very well at Missouri in a couple seasons who was a four-star level player. But And I say unfortunately because, obviously, he's now a Georgia Bulldog. But when you start thinking about all the different tight ends and running backs that Missouri has recruited Gavin McKay and Taj Butts, a, a tight end and a running back respectively, just hit the transfer portal reportedly in the last few days. So why are none of these guys who some of them have high rankings, the offensive line, same deal. Why are none of these guys really exactly panning out yet? Certainly by this season, by 2023, at the very least, we're going to be able to look back at the end of that season and say, hey, if we haven't developed more of these guys at this point, it's really, really fair to question Drinkwitz, the offensive staff, and everything at that point. start. It's fair to question if it's ever going to get better. This is a big season for the Missouri offense on so many different levels. And when you have questions at quarterback and the offensive line, well, that's worrisome. I think most of us would expect that Luther Burden should take a big step forward this season. But again, if he doesn't, Again, fair to question the development of this whole offense and staff. Now, it does seem like defensively, Missouri has done a better job of developing some of these guys. Like Dalen Carnell, for instance, last season, a former four-star corner who was converted to essentially a safety linebacker hybrid in that star position. Well, he had a a really star-like performance last season, I thought, for Missouri quite a bit and because of that because Missouri has done quite well speaking of developing guys how about Chris Abrams drain my goodness he's gone from a guy who was a receiver and punt returner as a true freshman at Missouri in 2020 to now one of the absolute best corners in the entire country and by the way because Missouri has such a strong corner a tandem and to me that's the strength of this team the absolute number one strength of this team coming into this year. And Missouri's biggest advantage is those two corners, Ennis Rakestraw and Chris Abrams Drain. Well, not that Tion Gray was going to come in and necessarily play a ton of snaps as a true freshman, obviously. He's part of the 24 class, so obviously he wasn't going to play this year at all. But my point is, I do just think that the edge rusher, you know, replacing guys like DJ Coleman, Isaiah McGuire, and well, I, I guess Trey John Jeff Co too, but come on, let's be serious. But no, really, edge the edge rusher, obviously an incredibly important element of, of any defense, but I do think it matters less to Missouri than it does to other teams because as we saw last season, that corner duo gives Missouri the option of bringing five, six, occasionally seven guys in pressure. And Lord knows, again, the aforementioned Dalen Carnell, Tyron Hopper, you bring those guys in in a blitz, very few quarterbacks are going to be able to outrun those guys. So you're going to have to get rid of the ball quickly and, again, into some tough coverage. You even saw Stetson Bennett and the Georgia Bulldogs struggle against that at times. And really, they never even figured it out. They kind of, what they figured out in the fourth quarter was, oh, let's, we they figured out some stuff in the ground game. That's really what Georgia figured out against Missouri. But regardless, you know what? Coming up here on the show, we're going to get a little bit strange because we're going to bring this back to Missouri, I promise. But I do have some thoughts 
about LeBron James and why I think he's one of the smartest basketball players of all time and how this relates to Dennis Gates in Missouri right after these quick words. One thing I love about Dennis Gates so far and gives me tremendous confidence going forward is not only is he a stat guy, he definitely loves the advanced metrics and all that stuff, but clearly he's a human guy as well. He understands relationships and the human element and all that good stuff. He also just has an ability, I think, to look at the bigger picture beyond just one game and one play. And I thought LeBron James was that game that the finish was really, really interesting to that game against Memphis yesterday. Of course, if you watched it, you noticed, no, it wasn't LeBron James closing that game with the ball and making the decisions, taking the, the shots in the clutch. No, it was Austin Reeves. And if you're not a big NBA fan, you might be going, who the heck is Austin Reeves? Well, actually, Missouri played against Oklahoma and Austin Reeves back in 2021 in the NCAA tournament. You remember? You may remember him. He's a six foot five guard, good lead ball handler, was a senior, by the way, a four year type player. Undrafted has become a really important piece for the Lakers, a guy who takes some of the primary ball handling responsibilities off of LeBron. And my point in bringing this up is because, to me, that was not only a great example of, okay, hey, this guy is really hot. I know that I'm the one of the best players in the world and of all time, by the way, but, hey, Austin Reeves has flames shooting out of his body right now. He's that hot. But I think bigger picture, LeBron James is also smart enough to realize that this Lakers team, if they're going to make a big run they're going to get to the finals, maybe even possibly win the championship for his fifth ring. Well, he's going to need Austin Reeves big time. And what did that do yesterday? Austin Reeves makes the plays. Again, he's hotter than fire and he ends up, you know, making some huge baskets and plays down the stretch, literally caught on camera yelling, I'm him at the top of his lungs. I don't think anybody's, I don't think Austin Reeves has ever felt more confident and inspired in his entire life because not only was he cooking he knows for a fact that one of the the greatest of all time maybe even the greatest of all time basically said nah you got this buddy imagine being that empowered and I think that's the right word that's something that Dennis Gates does with his team he empowers his guys to make his own to make their own decisions yeah occasionally they're gonna mess up but he's not the sort of Bobby Knight sort of style or maybe even Norm Stewart style of coach from that era that's looking to yank you at every possible mistake or turnover or, or you know shot selection that the coach doesn't love. I personally think this is actually progress. I really do because playing basketball scared is not really the optimal way to do it. You never want to do anything scared. You want to do it with confidence. And I think Gates and LeBron James, by the way, with Austin Reeves, I think they both have shown like, hey, I'm going to try to give these guys some confidence, especially when they've earned it. And I think Austin Reeves earned it this past weekend, and certainly Dennis Gates has earned all of our confidence so far as well. And again, hopefully I've earned your confidence as the host of Locked On Mizzou. And you know what? I'm confident I can get the Locked On Canes hosts with us here, hopefully this week, if not this week, uh, coming up very soon. Got to get some more information on Jake Garcia. I want to talk to somebody who is even closer to the situation. So you know what? Until next time, I'm John Miller, and thanks as always for listening to Locked on Mizzou.